Hello everyone, and welcome to this quick tip from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson, and today I want to give you a quick introduction to using node groups in Blender. Node groups are essentially a collection of nodes that we can then combine into a single grouped node, thus the name, that then allows us to essentially create a custom node. We can then use this group node either in compositing, in cycles, in uh, the Blender internal engine, in any system that supports the nodes, we can use the node groups. And the biggest advantage over node or for node groups is that they allow us to very easily reuse a node network or a collection of nodes that have been designed to do a specific thing. We can very easily reuse these in any project we wish by just linking or appending them into our file from, say, a library file or something like that. And so just to give you a quick demo, Let's first look at uh, how we bring in an existing node group, and then I'll show you how to create a node group from scratch. So first of all, I have this very, very simple scene that is just a basic cycle scene. It's got a sun lamp, a plane, a cube, and a world. Very, very simple. And what I would like to do is I would like to uh, bring in an existing cycles shader that I've created that is set up as a node group so that I can just quickly reuse it and add it to my scene. So the way that I would do this is I go up to the file menu and I would link so such that it references the, the node group in the original file and doesn't actually import the data. So this way, anytime I update the original file, it'll automatically update in this file. So if I link it and then I can just go into my library and I have a material or cycles library here. And if we just click on the file, then you want to choose node tree and then you can see all the nodes that you have available. And these include both compositing, uh, cycles nodes, and any other group nodes that we've created are all going to be shown right here because they're all using the same node type, a group, but then depending on what system that we're using that node group in will depend on how it's available. So let's just go ahead and choose, I'm just going to choose the car paint here. And let's link and append from library. Now, nothing's going to happen just yet because I haven't actually now uh, added it into my node chain. But if I just, I'll just select my cube here. And if we zoom out, we can see we've got a couple of nodes in here. And let's just hit Shift A and now go down to Group. And you can see I now have a car paint entry. So if I choose car paint, it immediately adds in my group node. And then you can see we have all of these different settings within this group. And so basically what this is, is a collection of nodes that create my car paint shader that then I have basically done what's called exposing the sockets and values to give myself basically a custom node. And I'll show you how that's gonna work in just a moment. But just for the time being, let's go ahead and remove our diffuse shader and let's just connect the car paint shader right to this and then we can immediately see it starts to render. Now, this cube is not a very good example of the car paint, but that's okay, we don't really need to worry about that. But so with this car paint shader, I then have the ability to adjust the flake size, the flake strength, and then I have four different colors that I can use to then get more depth within my car paint. So maybe I will go in and I'll give it a, you know, a nice red or, you know, say something like somewhere right about in there. Then I might grab my second color. Maybe I'll just copy and paste that red in, and then I'll make this one a little bit more pink, whatever. So then I can go in and I can adjust my shader exactly like I want it. And all of these values are dependent on this instance of the group node. Because remember that when we talk about linking in objects or nodes or anything like that, every time we then duplicate that link, such as if I duplicate this now, it's still referencing the exact same data. So the same, it's still re referencing the same node group in my original file, but now this is a second instance as you can see indicated by the three here. So there's three uh, versions of this. And if I now change the color here, you'll notice even though this is an instance, it does not change the color here. So each of these values are then de uh, dependent on this instance of the node group. And this is really, really valuable. And this is what actually makes it very easy to use because let's say that you're creating, you have say six different objects that all have the exact same uh, paint material, but you want each one of them to be slightly different colors. You could use a node group here to create that paint shader and then just create a group out of it and adjust the color on each one individually, and they would still use the exact same shader and the same nodes, but then the values would be different. So let's now, if that sounded really confusing, let's go in and actually look at how this works. 
So if I go ahead and hit tab, you're gonna, you'll see that it'll ask me to make the group local. And this is because right now it's linking the group. So it's only referencing the original file. But if I make it local, then I can basically bring all that data in and it will no longer be dependent on the original file and instead will be independent within this file. So I'll just hit tab and tab is how we edit a node group and we'll click make group local. Soon as I do that, you'll notice that the group suddenly expands and now we can see all the different components and different nodes that actually make up this group. So you can see we've got a Voronoi texture, we have a layer weight, several mixes, several a diffuse and a glossy, another glossy, a mix, a Fresnel, another mix. And so these are this is our car paint shader. And so if we actually ungroup this node, uh, which we could do by pressing Alt G, that would actually, uh, you know, we would still have the exact same shader. But then what you can see that we've also done is we have all of our different values and such right over here. And this is done by doing what's called exposing the value or exposing the, the input. And you can do it simply by grabbing a, an input here from any node and then just dropping it over there. That'll automatically connect it and name it. And we could go ahead and name it um, something else if we wanted. And what that does then is if we hit tab to leave that group node, we can see we now have a new value right here, the index of refraction, and we can then adjust this. So by default, it's three. But if I set this to say two, then that's going to change the index of refraction for this final output right here. But if I then say duplicate this down and I change this to four, then this one is gonna be before, this one remains two, even though if I hit tab and go and look at this, these are still the exact same nodes. And you can see this evident if we go ahead and let's just say, we'll just cut right through this. So we remove that connect connection and I'll hit tab to leave edit mode. So nothing seems to have changed, but if we now select this one, hit tab, you'll see that's also been removed. So both of these groups are using the exact same nodes right in here, but by then exposing their values here on the outside, it allows us to basically um, customize all of the node values on a group by group basis or instance by instance basis. And so this is one of the things that makes these nodes really, really powerful because we can very quickly reuse parts of shaders without having to actually duplicate the shaders. And you can see here that we also have groups are just data. So if I just, let's just, um, let's duplicate this. And now I will click the two on here. So it'll make that a single user copy, which is actually duplicating it. And then we'll just call this, you know, blah. And now if I click this down, you'll notice I have two different, uh, uh, different data blocks that I can use car paint and blah. And now each one of these are, are different. So if I go in here and let's just say, we'll remove this index of refraction there. And then if I look at this one, you can see that's still there. So they, they are now completely independent because they're now referencing separate data. So let's go ahead and let's just remove this. And let's take a look at how we could create a, a node group from scratch. So I'm gonna select this one. I'm just gonna delete it. Now let's just make this really simple and we're gonna add in say a diffuse shader. We'll add in a mix shader and we'll add in a glossy shader. And then we're just gonna do a very, very basic mix between these two. So we'll drop that in, we'll drop that in, and we'll drop that in. And so now I have my basic diffuse, we'll just mix these. Okay, so we've got a cool mix. But let's say now that we wanted to reuse this shader because we spent a lot of time working on it, it's really complicated, it does some really cool stuff, and we don't wanna have to recreate it every single time we wanna use this shader. So we can just hit Control G and that will make a new group. And I can then name my group as, you know, mine or whatever we want to call it. And then I can hit tab to leave edit mode. And now I have this group, but with this group, which we could now actually take this group and we can now link or pin that into other files, just like we brought in the car paint originally. But what if we say, you know what, on this group, I really want to be able to modify the colors here. So at any point I would like to be able to modify the diffuse color. So we just drag that over there, hit tab. And now I can input, let's just say a RGB. I can change that to blue drop that in there, and now it'll change the, the diffuse color within this group node to then be whatever we want. And so this works really, really nicely for doing uh, custom shaders and things like that. But it's not just restricted to shaders. It also works for compositing. So for example, let's just render this real quick, just so we have something to render. And now let's jump right over into the compositing view. 
And in the compositing view, I'll click that. And I'm gonna go back to file and link again. And this time I'm gonna pull in the vignette node. So I'll pull in that vignette node. And then let's just go in here and let's hit shift A. And now if I go down to group, you'll see we have a vignette node. So Blender is smart enough to be able to detect what type of nodes are included within the group. So if they're cycles nodes, it's going to include, they'll be available via the group menu in your cycles nodes, if they're compositing nodes, so forth. And so that way, even though they're all shown as the same in the same section of data in the original file, when we reference it, once we go in to add them to the, or once we uh, bring them into the file and then want to add them to our, our layout, then they're able to detect what type of nodes they are so that there's not confusion there. So now I can just, let's say I've, I've rendered my scene and let me just add in a backdrop and we'll connect this by hitting control shift, left click on that node. And now I wanna add a vignette to this, you know, very common effect. So I'll hit shift A, add in my group and choose vignette. And now you can see on my vignette node, I have several different things that I've defined. I've got an image input, I have an image output, and then I have a strength. And so, if I just drop in the image here, drop in the image here, then immediately I have my vignette effect. And if we hit tab to go into edit mode, and by the way, we can also adjust the strength here to make it less and less. And looks like I've actually got a setting reverse here. So if I hit tab to go into edit mode and I make that group local, then we can see exactly what's happening. Number one, I need to reverse those. There we go. Um, so I first bring it in, I have a lens distortion, it's then got a greater than value, so it's then pulling that anything greater than zero, so we get a white circle, and then I'm blurring that, and then I have that multiplied against the original image. And so one of the things that's nice here is normally we would have to feed in two image inputs, one into the lens distortion and then one into the multiply with then also multiplied against all of these settings. But since this is a group node, I can just feed this input into both of those. And then whenever I connect this one originally, then it just automatically connects everything else together. And so this makes it really, really easy to go in and create a reusable vignette effect that I can then manipulate and use at any point very, very quickly and very, very easily. And you can do this for all kinds of different nodes. And so what I recommend that you do is to create a material library of sorts or a compositing library. And we can see an example here. I've got a, a basic one that has a few nodes in it um, that allows me to then reuse these very quickly. So what I have here is just a very, very basic render scene. And then I have um, a few different uh, shaders. So I've got a plastic shader that I've created. I've got a better glass shader, which is based on one um, that an artist did on Blender Artist that makes use of the ray length node. I've got one that is, I've got my car paint shader. I have a glass absorption shader and then a blended box mapping, which actually is not needed anymore because this is now actually built right into the image nodes. But I have these different material nodes that then I can use very, very easily. You'll notice that each one of them um, I've set enabled fake user. So this way, if I ever did, or basically remove all references to this data, that way it won't be deleted upon reloading the file. So then I can just link these in to any file that I want, and then I can use them very, very quickly. And if you also, if you go in, and if I look at my default scene, let's just jump right over to, uh, we'll go over to compositing, uh, and I hit use nodes and hit shift A and go to group. You notice that I already have vignette add it because what I've done is on my default scene, I've gone in, I've gone to link, I've pulled in all of those group nodes, and then I've simply saved my user settings by hitting control U, and then that will save my user or my default scene with all of those group nodes already linked in, allowing me to just at any point go in and add them. So on my cycles, if I go into my node shaders in cycles, so we'll go to node editor, we'll switch to cycles, and we'll click use nodes. I hit shift A and go to group. Oh, actually, you can see that I don't have those attached. But uh, that's something that I've been, been meaning to do is if I go in and link all those, then save my user settings, then all of those will show up just like the vignette did. So that can make it really, really easy to reuse nodes within Blender, whether it's in compositing and cycles and the Blender internal and anything that uses nodes allows you to, to do that and really boost your efficiency, really boost your library of, of assets that you can use within your scene to allow you to you know, get a nice, a nice render or a, at least get a nice render in progress much more quickly than you would if you had to rebuild those every single time from scratch 
even though they might be consistent materials that you're using on a regular basis.